what is the way to import only static members of a class static members of a class so we can import using using a statement import statement import class name dot star if you want to assign it to some any other variable for example i have a, a class like uh, let's say interest rate and there is like a home loan interest rate so i want to assign it to my local class variable let's say interest rate is equal to so if we can import directly like class name dot variable name okay so i think you got confused there you can use static import yes if you want to uh, import all the variables then we can mention directly class name dot star at import statement only and if you want a specific variable then we, we can mention specific variable as well in import statement okay. how do you convert a string into an integer yeah parse int we can do it but like uh, if it is an uh, like uh, for example i have a string 10 okay uh-huh. so that kind uh, that kind of thing i can convert it like uh, we have so many parses there right so uh, like a uh, parse int we can do it. the uh, like a uh, uh, in the creation of conversion time itself uh, before that we'll give a praises we can convert it okay. if it is not converting we can go with the what do you understand by if i say recursive program or recursive code a recursive code or the recursive method or program uh, so it is it is mainly for the the particular functionality and uh, the particular utility we have and from that utility we want to recursive means number of time we have to perform same operation till the particular condition occur we are executing that part the same set of code we are uh, continuously in recursive it is automatically called means uh, the particular condition got it is calling the same again and again till that condition is do you understand why concurrent hash map concurrent hash map is like for the uh, means the synchronization purpose suppose uh, if we wanted to modify hash map uh, while we are iterating it so that time we can use the concurrent hash map and the main thing is concurrent hash map is provide a lock to the particular suppose uh, in our map there is a 10 element so it is providing suppose we are modifying particular suppose uh, first element so only that part it is locking the rest of the remaining nine element other resource can use this is the particular lock and this is the for synchronization for in- avoiding inconsistency or concurrent modification exception right so this is for avoiding that exception we can going for the concurrent hash map how would you detect a deadlock in a running program suppose a number of uh, in uh, multi threading number of resource wanted a uh, same resource and no one able to get uh, that resource so in that case there is a deadlock i think that is the information i have so there are some tools like j console have you heard about that never use j console and means for detecting deadlock uh, i never use any kind of tool it comes with jdk only i mean it is not externalized third party tool or anything it comes with jdk installation this okay. tool used for looking at the deadlock there are multiple other j visual and other tools as well third party so, tools it provides the insight of your project so whatever okay. objects are created whatever the deadlocks are happening it can provide that information to you so what you can do by observing mm-hmm. that information you can prevent deadlock can you tell me how you can implement jwt token for that you have to use uh, some annotation is there okay. you have to add a dependency in bomb.xml and the configuration enable authorization server and implement mm-hmm. that adapter classes you have to implement adapter classes your main class suppose you want to configure something uh, security con- uh, configuration and that one extend web security security configuration adapter classes and uh, there is a uh, configure method okay, based on that we can restrict your apis configure method you have to write that logic so do you have experience in aws yes yes currently we are started working on that aws docker how you are deploying your application yes, in yes. aws yes aws we are using docker for that one jenkin docker okay jenkin pipeline we are using in that jenkin pack pipeline we are creating a docker images and we will push that image in aws in aws AW- where exactly ecs ek2 okay these are the services right there and also ecs ecs ek2 ec2 no uh, ec2 uh, you want to say yeah yeah is it too what are the different challenges you have i mean recent challenge you have faced in your task challenges means actually i never worked on the full stack development okay? so yeah. previously i worked as a back end developer 
so i got a recent opportunity to work on the full stack so actually i started to learn the uh, front end uh, frameworks like uh, i think in our organization they have client already shortlisted to work on the react application so i have started learning all the react and all by using the online mediums like udemy and all coursera etc so there were they were facing some little challenges okay so because the uh, front end uh, development and the back end development uh, actually there is some there are some uh, differences right the javascript is work work differently comparative compared to java so they were i was little struggling but later on when i develop hands on on my front end skills then then things uh, go little better so now i'm i'm, I'm little bit confident uh, or more confident on the my front end development Uh, can you just elaborate how you start your day in your organization uh, do you follow agile methodology or any other uh, methodology no we, okay so because uh, because we have a small we, the company is very small we can select the startup uh, what we do basically so we daily have two meetings yeah okay, so in the morning so let's say the requirement basically comes to our business entity and in the meeting let's say the then he explain all the requirements and then we have separate modules okay let's say some let's say members are working on the order module some is working on the contact module so according to requirement okay according to the module on which the requirement comes so then the can say the work will be distributed and after that we basically have to let's say make a design document on that so let's say we have to design let's say the database part okay so let's say what so what is the table structure and then basically we do a developer meeting okay so then how can we start developing that let's say yeah, from that part we start the developing so this is the process so how we are managing the security of your microservices security you are talking about the, the application security or the, the user security or the the framework security or the callings between the downstream applications which i can consider here the security first i can sense it from the user point of view the access rules that we can putting with the spring uh, access controls yeah so you must sec- be using rest uh, are these services rest services or some other rest service? yeah rest service <clears throat> so rest services that means uh, they are using http okay http that is been the local but whenever we are deploying into the higher environment that will be yeah. comes with the https so i am talking about the inter uh, communication between these applications two applications you are yeah. talking do you know how you can create a prototype beam if we have to just mention the scope is equals to a prototype correct uh, correct yeah okay uh, can you tell me what is fail fast and fail safe uh, uh fail fast and fail safe yeah Uh, it's rela- uh, regarding the u- unit testing or something no, you are tell- it is related to collection F- do you know what is iterator oh, yes 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 uh, in uh, collections uh, i know like uh, re- iterator this iterator has a fail safe properties so there are two things fail safe and fail fast so Sorry you haven't that. heard yes. okay no yes. problem okay so suppose there are n number of threads who work on uh, m number of shared synchronized resources i mean there are mul- multiple threads and there are multiple shared resources as well so in this environment how would you make sure that deadlock does not happen uh, if uh, one thread is accessing resource m1 and another is m2 and then if it uh, goes to acquire the m2 and second thread goes to acquire the m1 they will be in deadlock i i, I got that i'm just thinking means whatever i have read that and know that i'm just thinking what could be the appropriate for that of whatever i have read mostly they talk about the resource ordering means uh, if you acquire the m1 then and then only you could acquire the m2 without that you are, you will not be acquired m2 or if there is any slight possibility also that uh, if you would require the m1 acquire the m1 and m2, when you are acquiring m2 you do not require the m1 release the m1 resource at least one at a time or if you want to uh, means uh, there could be some ordering or constraints such that uh, if you want to acquire particular resource so you uh, do not need to you should have that uh, other resources or you do not if you do not then release it or you acquire the resources in that particular order only or you could try the lock only but try the lock uh, will also be result into that lock. but ordering and releasing the resources that to only as of now i could think of that you can use certain framework as well to find like deadlock situation in your application have you aware about mm-hmm. that there are some tools no, available uh, not so much 
means so what i have uh, what we have encountered and what we have checked is mostly with the set dump getting the sets and checking that what lock set is waiting for what other sets are waiting for with the lock I means mostly i have checked with set dump only uh, not so sure with the uh, tool i have not used any tool. okay i am not aware of that okay fine that's fine